the spiritualist churches are not about the search for truth. They're about people finding community, practicing their belief. The majority of people who go there regular are very devout, very often older people who've lost quite a few relatives, perhaps their husbands or wives. More often husbands, there's a lot of women in spiritualism. And the mediums, well, are they passing on the keys to truth or just simply using the same old tricks? Would you call that the search for truth, to understand the nature of reality? Or would you call it simply people going there for affirmation to support their faith? It's no better than the miracles you find in certain Christian branches. And with spiritualism and indeed Christian spiritualism, you simply have the same sort of practice. Churches, prayers or a silence in some cases. And you have maybe some hymns, maybe some modern music, maybe just some music played to get people in the right kind of frame of mind. A bit of philosophy, and then the messages, or readings, whatever you wish to call them. They don't differ all that much from mainstream cold reading. Most of it is incredibly simple and basic, and I've covered that in previous videos. But what I will say is, it is not a search for truth. It's simply people relying on faith and then relying on authorities within the belief system to support the belief. So, oh yes, it must be true, it must be true, because there's a book here in, you know, if it's a well-established spiritualist church, it'll have a library, and um, a small book section at the very least at the back of the church, not really a full library, but um, yes, you'll have a book there by Arthur Finlay, or Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, or by any number of other characters, old ones from the early 20th century, such as the ones I mentioned, or more recent characters, more recent mediums, more recently trained people, because there are various so-called professional organisations and people get trained by them to be professional mediums. But these people are simply passing on the same old stuff. They're not showing how things work. They're not going, oh yes, I, okay, I'm getting an equation through, Mr. Hawking. Um, okay. Um, oh, they're saying they can answer a question. Um, okay. There was something you're working with, and it was this. I'll give full details. And, oh, you were slightly off on this. Could you double check that? And it was like, oh, yes, this is correct. I mean, if that was the case, that would be remarkable. But we don't get that. You don't get um, good communication. You get supposedly good communication. Uh, this is evident, by the way, with those people who claim to communicate the best and the deepest. Those people who go into trances and channel directly spirits. They, they effectively possess them. You know, the term isn't really all that kosher, but you get the point. And you get possessed, supposedly. It's usually these older mediums, more or less. And they talk directly, as if the spirit is directly controlling them. Now, why is that never in a public scene, well, as far as I've seen, I've never seen it in public where a person has claimed to channel a close relative communicating as I communicate with you now. I wonder why that is. Why is it always a Native American guide, or some other guide, it doesn't have to be Native American, but Native Americans are incredibly popular. And why is it always a guide and it's always like, oh yes, you're doing well, you are learning quickly. Uh, as with one experience I had with one woman who ran a group, uh, her name was Hazel, and she had that kind of uh, accent and um, style. And supposedly that was meant to be literally the Archangel Michael. In other cases, it was literally a Native American. And indeed, with a great many people, they give out spirit guides like fucking confetti. Pardon my French. But uh, yes, the idea that, oh, you've got so many guides... I'm going, to give out the, I'm going to give out the names of your guides, you know, some very confident and possibly uh, young and arrogant medium might say. And, uh, yeah, you end up with eventually so many guides that you can't keep track and there's an excuse there. Oh, many of these people aren't your, uh, your top guides, but they're ones that will work with you and you'll end up with thousands who come in and out of your life. That's an incredibly slippery way of doing things, isn't it? So really it does come down to a question of belief. What you choose to believe, how you choose to reinforce your beliefs. And the people who really go there aren't looking for truth. They're looking for some kind of way of perhaps feeling special, getting some kind of comfort or some kind of community.